Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to Wood by Wright 2. Today we are restoring this Sorby. This is a Sheffield saw that is absolutely gorgeous. And you can see here it's fairly pretty, but here's what it used to look like. So yeah, we're gonna be sharpening it, we're gonna be cleaning it all up, and we're gonna be fixing up the handle. Let's dive in and take a look at this fun project. This is a beautiful old saw that I picked up at a Midwest Tool Collectors Association meet. I, I want to say I paid $20 or $30 for it, so it's a pretty darn cheap price for such an old saw. It has a handle made of English oak and a beautiful, beautiful saw, but it is broken. Now, there are several pieces broken off of the handle itself, and it needs a lot of work. So I'm going to start by taking it all apart and seeing how much I actually need to do. You can see the chunk missing from the, the handle here, and there was another chunk that broke off that was uh, it was too bad to, to, to put back on, so I actually needed to create a couple of them. Now, before I wanted to go anywhere, I actually wanted to see if this handle, if the wood was any good, or would I have to replace it. Originally, I was planning on replacing it because I have a chunk of 100-year-old white oak that 100 year old English oak that would work perfectly for it um, but in this case it turned out to be pretty good you can see how massive the distance is between these growth rings it is very very old growth oak and I, I really wanted to keep this at all possible and thankfully most of it was pretty good there were there are a few slight cracks in it but as long as I oil it up it will work out pretty well now the first thing I need to do is clean off the surface where I'm going to be mating on a new piece and so I wanted to chisel it all down make sure it was flat and flush all the way across and it was a nice clean junction between them. Uh, it's, it's very important to have a, a smooth surface between all the pieces so you can get a really nice fit up between them for the glue to actually work. So I'm going to chop it all up, clean it up, and get it ready for the piece. The next thing I need to do is actually find what piece do I want to use on this. And uh, that was a little bit more difficult because I was originally thinking I would take a chunk of that 100 year old white oak, uh, English oak that I had and uh, use that in there, but then I thought, eh, I really want to save that for something else. So then I thought, maybe it's a chunk of cherry, but the cherry won't match it quite right. And then I found a piece of paduk, and the paduk might, but no, not quite. And then I found this curly white oak, and I thought, yeah, curly white oak. That's always the right answer, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, so this, this actually worked out pretty well, and it was about the right thickness. So I cut off little chunks of it and make them fit in there, making sure that there's enough space that I can then, um, I, can, I can rasp and file around them. I want to make sure that there's, there's more sticking out than I need, because it's better to have more than not enough. So just a couple little pieces that need to get glued in place. Now, to clamp these all in place and glue them, it, it was a, a bit of a, a challenge. It's, it's not a natural thing. Um, so I was, went back through and made sure that everything was a nice tight fit so they don't need a lot of pressure, they just need to be held in place. I, I don't want anything needing to be actually pushed into place. I want it to all be perfect and just sit there and as long as the glue is, is well across it, it will hold itself. Uh, for the glue, I'm actually just using a 5-minute epoxy because I wanted to get the whole thing done in this, the time I had to create it. If I weren't doing that, I'd probably use a West System epoxy or something like that. I put a spacer in between the two jaws that was the exact same thickness as the brass back. And this way I could clamp things to that spacer and hold them in place that way. So now let's get over to the blade and the back. I can pull these apart and this is actually a folded back. So you can see that it's bent over as opposed to being cut into shape. And it makes it very easy because it pinches the blade and it, it comes off a lot easier. It's not held in there with any glues or anything like that. For the blade itself, I'm going to start with a, uh, a scouring pad. Now this pad is like a 200 grit, and I'm, I'm keeping it fairly light. I don't want to take off material, I just want to hit the rust. And that, that takes off most of it, and then I can come in with a 400 grit sandpaper and hit most of the spots that are left. I want to leave as much of the original patina on this. Well, not patina because I'm, I'm taking all the rust off, but I want to leave that look on it. I don't want to polish it up and make it shiny. The last step I'm going to hit with some WD-40 and then get that 400 grit sandpaper in just those last few spots, clean them all out and make sure that everything's good on it. And then of course oil it up and make sure that it's not going to rust up again on me um, because once you clean all that off there's a chance of getting some uh, flash rust on there. So oil it quickly and uh, let it sit. And I, I love this. It's a really, really thin plate. I, I can't remember what, how thin it is, but it's incredibly thin. For the brass, it's going to be about the same thing, starting with that same scouring pad, just cleaning off the, uh, the, the oxidation on the outside and uh, polishing it off. And this really brings it through. I'm not going to polish up the brass and make it shiny. I want to leave that original look on there. Especially the logo on there popped out from that. Now on to sharpening the plate. I have several videos on how to sharpen saws, and a dovetail saw is a rip saw. 
Though some people do put a little bit of flame in there, I like to keep it just straight across. I want it to be just a, a simple uh, uh, rip saw. And the teeth are really, really tiny on this one. This one was uh, 16 ppi. Uh, so not incredibly small, but really small. So you gotta, you got to keep a close eye on it. I'm using a uh, one of my smallest uh, files. This is a... Um, Actually, I can't remember what company made this particular file. I, I bought it from uh, uh, from Lee Valley, and uh, it's a nice little set. So uh, if you want to see videos on how to sharpen, I have several of those. Go look at that, and I can go into far more detail on there. Now that the plate is sharpened up and the glue has set on this, we can come back and start doing our shaping. I want to take off the majority of the work, and so I'm going to be using a very heavy file and rasp, making sure not to put too much pressure on it. I do not want to break off the pieces. <laughs> They're only held on there with a uh, five-minute uh, five glue, and uh, that will hold really well once they have, have bonded. Uh, but right now they're they're set and they're hard, but it will take another 24 hours for the glue to fully cure So we can cut off some of the pieces with a saw and then slowly bring them back to shape Rounding everything over and I'm trying to duplicate the original shape on the handle uh, as much as possible And I think I got it fairly close. There were a few things that I modified ever so slightly just to fit my style But uh, most of it was, was right on just taking it back to the original surface and uh, going from there. Some of the places it's easier to come in with a chisel and take it off quickly, and some places uh, just grab a rasp and run it down. Just make sure with the rasp you don't go too far and grind into the old surface. Now there are these, uh, these eyes on the side that are done with a rounded surface. And then in front of that, there's a flat rabbit step. And uh, I, I like the little design on this. It's, it's slightly different, but uh, very sharp. And as long as you take your time and do it slowly, you can uh, duplicate that image really nicely. And so I'm just duplicating what was originally on this side onto the other side. And now I want to take off all of the, the surface gunk from the years. Um, a lot of that is the, the old tallow and other surfaces that were on there. Uh, I, I could leave it on there, but because I put a new piece on, I want to blend it together. Now, I don't want to take off a lot of material, so I'm mostly I'm just using the fine files and just taking off the outside... Um, almost patina on there. It's just that, that, that coating on the outside I want to get rid of. And I'm going to start putting my own on there with boiled linseed oil, of course. Once I've gotten most of that off, I want to remove all of the uh, file marks and scrapes. Um, the to, best way to do that is actually check it with sandpaper and then come back and file it again. The, the sandpaper will fill all of the scratches with dust and that lets you know where you can remove them with the, with the file. Because uh, the file actually will give it a much smoother surface than the sandpaper will. Now to put the back back on the blade, um, you can't just pound it straight down on the back. You have to pound it in from the end. And it takes a little bit of time. You have to do it step by step. Do not push it too far. Otherwise, you'll bend the blade. And so I'm only lifting it up about an inch or so, tapping it down that inch, then lifting it up another inch or so, and tapping it down that inch until I get close to the end. And then we can tap it down the rest of the way. Um, so don't, uh, don't rush this. Don't, don't bend your blade and, and have to start all over. <laughs> So you can see how it goes all the way down to the tip. Um, this one actually went a little bit past the tip, so I had to eventually hang it over the bench a little bit and tap it down. I want to test the holes I need to drill because I need to enlarge the hole ever so slightly for the nuts. The net set that I got was from Tools from Working Wood. I'll try and leave a link to that down below. And I got the, the steel ones. I was originally thinking about getting the brass, but I kind of like the look of the steel, and I wanted to say these are not original. But I, I love the look of the, the split nuts on here. So I just wanted to drill them out, test it. So we, uh, we, we put one through, lock it down, and then drill the second hole and make sure that it is a nice tight fit. We do not want any slop in these, so the hole should be just exactly the size of the bolt that has to go through it. Now that we have the two nuts in there, we can take it for a test drive, and I was rather happy with this, especially right off of that sharpening, um, because there was a lot of work to do on that sharpening. It, it took a serious amount of work. So I cut one line, and then I want to see how close I can come to it with the second one. And I got these little pieces to pop out, so it was, it was pretty decent. I need to do a little bit of tweaking, but not much. Now we need to finish it, and I'm just going to be using my normal boiled in soil and paste wax finish. Anything I have with hands on here, I love the feeling of it. And here you can actually see the maker's mark I was left on there. Uh, I, I could not maker's mark, the, the previous owner. And it was kind of cool to have that connection on there. You can see I, I did not take off much material with the file. I just wanted to bring out the natural color and look of that English oak. And it is absolutely beautiful. You can still see the age and the feel and the wood. And I wanted it to be something that you could tell had a history to it, but wasn't covered in rust and age, so you could actually see the history behind it. 
And I am, I'm really, really happy with how this handle came out and the piece that was put on there. I think it fit rather well. So now we can uh, finish up the finishing and start putting this whole thing together. There are a lot of little micro adjustments that go into the assembly and just making sure everything works out well. Uh, I drive in the nuts as far, the bolts as far as they'll go, and then I'm actually going to crank them down in tight with the nut on the other side, and this will pull them flush on both sides. Uh, one of the things I tested earlier is to make sure that they actually fit in there and that they, they sunk down flush on the outside. Here you can see how the split nut works. You actually need a split nut driver, which you can also purchase from uh, Tools for Working Wood. Um, you'll see that in the, the link below. But we want to tighten them up a little bit and then get them all the way in. I'm actually going to clock the nuts so that they're lining up. That just makes me happy. So they're in line with the, the brass back on here. And taking them down that fine a little bit to make sure everything is exactly the way I want it. Nice and tight and a good fit on there. Give it the final wipe down and we can take it for a test drive. And woohoo, this is the fun part. How far can I get in one push? Not bad. But it, you'll notice it's actually veering to the side, and so that means I need to stone the plate. Uh, there's a little bit too much set on one side, so I'm going to take off a little bit of set on that side, and then we can go back and test it again and see if it still veers, and that fixed the problem. So now we're getting a nice clean cut all the way down, and we want to actually see how close can we get these together. So we can do one cut all the way down, and then we can match it up with another cut all the way down and see how that goes. That lets me know I'm cutting really nice and straight. You can see how these will all line up and be right next to each other. One, and then two. And it, it does take a little bit of skill. There is a little bit of guidance, but you'll notice that the, the saw is tracking really nicely all the way down right up against the other one. And that is precisely what you want in a dovetail saw. A really, really thin cut that is very controllable and you can put it precisely where you want it, exactly on a line. And that's one of the things that makes a dovetail saw a dovetail saw. Very, very happy. <laughs> and I had a lot, of time, a lot of fun playing with this thing and I'll have a lot of fun playing with it in the future. I'm really happy with how this came out and I am in love. <laughs> it's kind of hard not to when you have such a fun toy to play with. Oh, yeah. So there you have it. This is absolutely a blast. You notice how it's, it's thinner up here and thicker back here. That's called cant. It's common to have that so you're not cutting quite as deep on the side of the board that's away from you. Sort of a way to make sure you don't mess up. And it was very, very common in back saws for a long time. I'm really loving how this came out. I'm, I'm glad I was able to keep the original oak. I do have some 100-year-old English oak that I thought would work pretty well. But uh, this, is, this is absolutely gorgeous. So I haven't figured out what I want to do for this, whether this is one I want to keep and start using, or if I want to do a giveaway on it, let me know. I'm sure everyone out there is going to say do a giveaway, but so we'll see how that goes. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please let me know down below. If you do have any questions, thoughts, or ideas, let me know those down below as well. Um, and do thank you for that. If, if you do want to help out the channel, some of the best ways are hitting the like button, subscribing, sharing the video. Those really do help out, and thank you for that. Also, if you want to help out monetarily, you can click the join button down there as well as join on Patreon. Those really do help out the channel. I don't have any sponsorships on this channel. I want to keep it that way. So we are completely supported by you, the viewers. Thank you for that. That's about it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So here's a question for you. If I'm restoring a saw, does this make it a resaw? <laughs>